Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who you continue to be. Father, be thy exalted. Lord, we come before you tonight to seek for wisdom, to seek for direction, to seek for guidance, to seek for more of you. We need you more than ever, Lord. We live in a world of so much distraction. Lord, we have come to seek for empowerment. Empower us tonight to be focused. Empower us to instinctively identify your voice, even in the midst of many noises, even in the midst of many things that we might be going through. Lord, visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Rekindle our fire once again. Rekindle our fire once again. Rekindle our fire once again. Father, let your name alone be exalted, O God. Father, let your name alone be glorified. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Let your presence invade every home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Good evening, everyone. Um, I believe everyone had a wonderful weekend and started the new week on a good note. So like I said in the text, when we went back on the series of the journey, which is uh, the pursuit of purpose, the pursuit of purpose. However, in order not to waste time, I'm going to quickly go into, um, just to do a recap where we stopped last week, you know, um, on destiny. what it takes to fulfill destiny. Um, I'm going to quickly establish uh, a Bible reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1.5. Jeremiah 1.5. Anyone who is there can go ahead and read Jeremiah 1.5. Our topic is the pursuit of purpose. Jeremiah one five says, "Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb." I sanctify thee and ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. So it's very important that even before we take off in the pursuit of purpose, it's very important to identify, Lord, what is my purpose? Very, very essential to identify, Lord, what have you called me to do? What have you written? What is my assignment? What is the clear goal? What do you have in mind? What is the intention? What is the intent? Why am I here? You know, so it's very important because there are many options that we will come across. Many things we will be appealing. Many things we will have desires for many things, but in finding, this purpose, it, it brings fulfillment of destiny. It brings satisfaction even to the mind of the Father. So that's why we're looking at the scripture tonight, which I believe we read last Tuesday, last Thursday, and Tuesday, which is Jeremiah 1.5. It says, I knew thee before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet. So many Jeremiah has been ordained to do what? 
ordained means his destiny has been destined, you know, for this purpose was being also given to him by God. Because destiny means you have been preordained, what you have been ordained, you know. Destiny is your destination. Um, uh, is there any noise from my background from your end? Yeah, your I, mic a little bit. My mic, right? Yeah, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's better now? No, he's still here. Is it be noisy or just a little bit? No, like every time you speak, yeah. What about now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hold on. Um, so like I said. I said, yeah. Is my mic better now or you can still hear the noise? You're good He's on still... my you're good on my end. I don't really hear anything. I don't... Okay. Okay. Can okay, anyone, any other person give me a feedback? Like now it's good. Now it's good. Okay. All right. Thank you, um, Sister Rebecca and uh, Jan. Thank you. So what I would try to say is it's very important for we to define, uh, you know, just to make this a little bit, a little bit more interactive. Does anyone want to define for us what purpose is? Anyone? Anyone, you can use Google, you can use anything. Anyone wants to define uh, what purpose or the difference between destiny and purpose? Anyone? Before we begin to dig deep, anyone wants to tell us what you understand by destiny and purpose? What is the difference? You know, in case we have any English students here or any, you know, Anyone, you can use anything. I just want us to, the reason why I'm giving this room is for we to have um, a much better understanding, you know. I would say purpose is the reason for existence or creation. Yep, yep, thank you. Any other person? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think for me, I will, just like Yana said, that your purpose is your reason for, for existence, but your destiny is working in that purpose. Because the Bible says that Jesus went as it was written of him. So his purpose was to come to die for us and all that. But he knew that it was his destiny to die. It was his destiny to to preach, to heal the sick, to do those things. So knowing your purpose is one thing, but going as is written of you, going as you have found out, okay, now you have found your purpose, but now are you working in that purpose is destiny. That is, I don't want to have plug it, but I think- Plug it, plug it, it, plug it. <laughs> yeah, so- yeah, I feel like um, destiny is um, is um, that thing that is written in heaven concerning you. That's no matter where you, it's like saying that your name is somewhere. Now, for example, they name you somewhere. There's a, there's, you're a prophet and you want to go and work as a, um, as somebody like Ayakila somewhere. No, it can't work because that's not your destiny. Your destiny is to be a prophet. And the way to work in that destiny, to do the right thing is to first know the purpose. Why am I born? Who am I? When you find out who you are, when God shows you your purpose, they say that when the purpose of a thing is not known, then um, it will be inevitable to spoil that thing or to misuse that thing. You understand? So as children of God, if we don't know the reason why we are existing, it will be hard to run away from sin. If, if you don't, Tyro, don't let me preach. Take please, over please, your... Please. I'm serious. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, not, I'm serious. Go ahead. 
like so i i feel like if you don't know that purpose the reason why god has made like me let me say me if i don't know why god has made me now if i don't know i will just live life the way i want to live life i will make decisions on my own i will not run to god before making decisions you know the bible says in proverbs 3 5 to 6 it said that you should lean not on your own understanding but in all your ways you acknowledge god right and he will direct your path so once i know my purpose and the only way i can know my purpose is by coming to the one that manufactured me the one that was there at the beginning the one that formed me that knew me before they even formed me in my mother's womb as a matter of fact he formed me so he know the reason why he formed me you know, he says that he's the potter and I am the clay. So he's the one that knows what he's making out of me. So in order for me to function, to work in his will, in order to, to fulfill that purpose, I have to, in order to fulfill my destiny, I have to know my purpose. You understand? I have to know my purpose to be able to work in my destiny. I don't know how to else, to, <laughs> but you understand what I'm, please, do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You, you cannot walk in destiny until you know your purpose. So if you already know that, so if you right. already know, if you already know that, okay, I'm supposed to be a teacher, for example, I already know now that I'm, I'm supposed to be a teacher. Once I know that I'm supposed to be a teacher, everything I have to do, I have to channel my movement towards that line. But while I'm working with God to guide me, working with the Holy Spirit to guide me, whatever I'm doing, I have to work in that line. That is my destiny because that is what God has written concerning me. Jesus knew his purpose and that was why he walked as it was written of him. He walked, that was his destiny to die on the cross. It was his death, no matter what Mary said, no matter how much love Mary has for Jesus, our eyes could not take it when they, when they nailed Jesus to the cross. Because I mean, how do you labor in pain for a child, you know, and raising that child on from child from baby to when the child grow up and you stand there to watch that child dying on the cross. As a mother, I don't see a mother that wants to bear that kind of pain. You understand? But she knew that that is his destiny. She knew David, um, Jesus' destiny before even Joseph, the father, knew Jesus' destiny. And that is why when there was lack of wine in the wedding, the first miracle Jesus did, because she is Jesus' mother and the, the, the angel explained his destiny to, to what's it called? Explained Mary, Jesus' destiny Mary. to Mary. She told them, go and talk to that young man over there. Whatsoever he tells you to do, just do. Because she knew the power he carried. She knew his destiny. She knew his purpose. She knew everything. You know, I mean, this message, I don't know, it's deep. <laughs> but <laughs> that's just the way I see it. You need to know your purpose in order to work in your destiny. If you don't know your purpose, you can't work in your destiny. You... Yes, simple as that, so that you can continue your teaching. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to keep talking. Don't worry. It's um, your platform. You go, you, no, no, that is not my platform. It's God's platform, you know. So you're still going to, um, this, I want to tell everyone, the reason why this is the way this Spirit is leading me. To be honest with you, for anyone who has been very consistent on this prayer line and study line is, it's been a long time we had an interactive interactive session like this. My plan tonight, let me show you my notes. This is my notes. I have so much scripture, but the moment we started talking, the moment I asked that question, I just, I felt that nudge in my spirit to pull back and let, let, let hear from everyone. Because while each person, and thank God for Brianna's definition as well, while each person is contributing, everyone will be picking what the Lord want them to hear. Because we won't be here, we, we are hearing the same thing 
from each speaker, but in our spirit, we are hearing different things. Holy Spirit will be ministering to everybody differently. You know, so if I'm going to summarize what our sister, Sister Kenny just said now, and if you check the chat as well, my wife posted some things in the chat relating to what Sister Kenny, my twin, just said now. She said, you cannot fulfill destiny until you find purpose. Purpose is the original reason why a manufacturer creates something. Your destiny is destination. The journey, the end, destination, where you are going. Purpose is the intent, intention of why that person was created. So I want to hear from any other person. You know, if any other, and please, Kenny, like I said, please, and I'm saying this to everyone, don't forget we have two hours. I will let you guys, you know, when I need to step in or when I need to stop the interactive session. But between now and 10, if anyone, I'm, 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 I'm hodging, I'm appealing. If anyone, God put anything in your spirit in this, because let me be honest, the reason why I really encourage people to talk about this is because like my twin said, like Mr. Kenny said, if, if this understanding does not sink in, if this understanding does not sink in, believe me, you won't intentionally make some wise choices. You will never run from sin. There are some things that you will play around until this understanding of purpose and destiny sink in. So I'll stop there for now. Before I proceed, does anyone, 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 please want to talk about purpose and destiny? Anyone? And I want you to know that nothing you say is foolish. It might sound stupid to you, but nothing is ever foolish. Anyone? I'm gonna give it a few minutes again. Anyone or Kenny, if there's still more within your spirit that the Holy Spirit is revealing to you that you want to share, you can go ahead while someone else is thinking. Um, praise the Lord. I just um uh, what just came to my heart right now. I didn't even know that I was going to say anything tonight, but what just came to my heart is that as um as children of God. I'm sure we'll be hearing this from maybe church or anywhere or my own personal Bible studies at home. But tonight, like God just want me to talk about this thing that I want to say. Please, if you are single and you are here on this platform and you love yourself, you love your destiny, you really want to, you want to make heaven, you want to reach the highest potential that you have, that God has made for you. You know, Deuteronomy 28, 13 talks about you are the head and all the tail, this and that. That means that there is no room for you at the bottom as a child of God. So whatever level you want to get to, whatever top, the top that you want to get to, that you want to attain, trust me, God has bigger plans than that. So if you wanted to get to 100, it can take you to a zillion, it can take you to a million. But the only way you can get to, to maximize your potential, the giftings, the things, the deposits inside of you is to find the father. The, that is when you find the father, the one that manufactured you. When you buy a car, it comes with a, with a manuscript or something from the manufacturer that it tells you if something goes wrong on this side, look at this. If something goes wrong on this side, look at this. So likewise, as singles, Please, before you make the decision of getting married, before you make that decision, because marriage is very costly. Let me put it that way. It's very costly. Is it that it's going to make you or break you? I'm in marriage right now, so I can tell you that marriage is costly. You know, it doesn't mean that because it's costly, that means that you're having a bad marriage. No, that's not what I'm saying. But the point I'm making is that 
is going to affect every aspect of your life. It's going to affect every decision that you make. Even when you want to run to God and you see the, the someone, the God is summoning you. You cannot run to God if your partner is holding you back. So you need to know your purpose before you make that costly decision of getting married. When you know your purpose and you already know, for example, that there's a call on your life, there is this, this, this going on. When you see, even if you are ready right now in a relationship that would not let you fulfill your purpose, my dear sister and brother, a broken relationship is way, way, way better than you missing heaven. A broken relationship is way, way better than God talking to you on the last day, on judgment day, and telling you that, oh, my daughter, my son, this particular family was supposed to be great through you because your life is connected to someone else's life, but they could not be great because you did not follow your purpose. They could not be great because you refused to arise and do what he has called you to do. So just as the Lord is putting it in my heart to say it on this platform right now, Please, before you decide to get married, I'm begging you again, I'm pleading, I'm begging you. It may seem very difficult to break away from a relationship that you're already in, but trust me, people are just going to talk for a few weeks. And even you, you might hurt. It will hurt your feelings because you're already all called up in this relationship and you feel like the person is going to see you as a hater or they will see you as you broke their heart. But trust me, your destiny is very important. You have to go as it is written of you. You have to go as it is written of you. If you don't go as it is written of you, then you are going the opposite direction. If God is telling you to go this way and you are going a different way, you're, you're still not going to align with his will. You know, so please, I don't know. I just, I don't know what that message is for, but please, as it has come to my heart again to tell you, find your purpose. Is when you find your purpose, every other decision you are making, you will just notice that as you know your purpose and you are working with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, because it's a daily thing, you will see that you will start running away from certain things. Certain things that not before usually will interest you, will no longer interest you anymore. Because you're now, you are not just living life, just existing. No, you are now living. When you know your purpose, that's when you start living. So even if you are 40 years old and you still don't know your purpose, you are not living because you are not working according to the manuscript of the one that made you. You understand what I'm saying? So please, let's pray. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I don't know how long God will take to answer each and every one of us. I mean, I don't know if you have to fast three days, five days a week, two weeks. But God is your heart. It's your intention, your heart. God is looking at your heart. How serious are you about knowing who you are? How serious are you about knowing where God wants you to be so you can position yourself well? When you know your purpose, you will not just be talking anyhow anymore. I'm being honest with you. You will know certain things that you used to just vibe and jive about. You will not do it anymore because now you are beginning to be formed in the image. You will stay more. Nobody will force you to go in God's presence anymore. You will start hungry by yourself. The Holy Spirit will quicken your inner man. You will start to hunger and go in that God's presence because every time you go in his presence, he will have something to teach you. He will have something to show you. And trust me, every day draws you closer to, your, to that destiny. Every day draws you closer to that purpose. So when you are not going to God's presence, you are not going to the one that manufactured you. You cannot really know what's going on. I'm very sure because Mary already knew the destiny of Jesus. She let him go to the, to the um, sanctuary or what do they call it in their days? The church in their days. The Bible says he started going there from the age of 12 you will go there all day we stay there we will not even think of going home to eat but i'm sure in our generation no mother wants to leave their child alone in the church for so long hours and they they'll be at home or something but this woman will leave jesus it will be at the church one time bible says that they went somewhere with the family and for almost how many days they didn't see him when they found him, he told his mother, why are you worried? Like, why are you concerned? But she knew because she knew the kind of child that she gave birth to. So for we parents, for we mothers, 
for we mothers, it's important that if we don't know the destiny and purpose of our children, let's pray, let's ask God that God, this child you have given me, or singles that are looking into marriage, when you are approaching the time you want to get pregnant, pray, let God talk to you about your child. So that way you can nurture your child and raise your child the way of the Lord. So you can raise that child in the way that pleases God so that child can fulfill purpose. Because on the last day, you and I will give account of the children God has given to us. And if we are not married, if we do not have kids, we will give account of our own life, you know? So all these things are important. And that is why there is no ignorance. Ignorance is not an excuse in the kingdom of heaven. When you work in your purpose, the Bible says that we perish because of lack of knowledge. We perish because we don't know better. The way that I use my Instagram before is not the way I use my Instagram now. How many minutes I spend on my Instagram before is different from how I spend on my Instagram now. Why? Because I know better now. You understand? Not because I didn't know better then, but now I know better of who I'm supposed to be and other things I'm supposed to be doing with my time. You understand what I'm saying? So all these things, running away from sin, it will no longer be hard because now you'll be going in God's presence. And the more you are in God's presence, he will be giving you grace. Not that once in a while you will not commit sin. I'm not saying you are perfect. Me that I'm talking to you, I'm not telling you that I'm perfect. But every day, it's like you behold him like a mirror. Every time you go, he will teach you. Every time, when I talk to my to me or to Taiwo sometimes, I tell them, I tell them my flaws. Like when God is, when the Holy Spirit is pointing out my flaws to me, he shows me my flaws. Does it mean that it's done with me? No, it's not done. But what I'm trying to say to you is that where I am right now is not where I was before. Because why? I surrendered myself to him to say, you know what, do with me whatever you want to do with me. Whatever it is, you have to make up your mind because if you are still one leg in and one leg out, it's hard for the Holy Spirit to even train you. Because now, if you are praying, let's say you are praying, example, you are praying a father and die prayer. We don't know where you are. You want to pray for that and die, but you are still living in sin. The people from the pit of hell can attack you. The people from the kingdom of God, they can attack. When they attack, you are in the middle. One of the bullets will hit you because you are still living in sin. And it will be hard for God to even protect you. You understand? So it's very important that we just, um, we, we take our eye, take your eyes away from the, what is this thing that Daniel, the, the, the food that the king, the king's meal, take your eyes away from the king's meal. For, for, just take your eyes away from all these distractions, all the distractions that we see every day, all the baits that the enemy is throwing at us, that is taking our time and is not letting us create time for God's presence, that is taking us away from spending time in his presence. Because the devil knows that the moment you stay there in that presence, you will know you. And the moment you know you, that means that the Holy Spirit will damage your ignorance. Once the Holy Spirit damage your ignorance, you will start to like, it's like a light bulb will just come up in your brain. You'll be like, oh my God, I've been wasting time all this while. And then you start to walk in the will of God. You start to do the right thing that God wants you to do. But that is the thing the devil is fighting. He doesn't want our ignorance to be damaged. He wants us to walk in ignorance so that we can walk into fire. When you see somebody that is diabetic and they have diabetic neuropathy, for example, diabetic neuropathy is like when they no longer feel pain, like when you use a needle to prick, to prick their ears or prick their legs or whatever, they don't feel it because of the neuropathy. The diabetes has damaged their nerves. When it damaged the nerve endings, when they are walking into fire, they don't even know that there's fire, except they see it. When their leg touches hot coals, they don't feel it. And that is why when a nurse, you want to take care of a diabetic patient and they have neuropathy, you have to put your hand into the water. Make sure the water, the temperature is good because you cannot depend on that um, patient to just walk into the bathroom and just use that water like that because they do not feel that temperature. Their nerve endings are damaged because of diabetes. The same way the enemy wants us to 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 be ignorant and just walk anyhow and just live life anyhow meanwhile time is not promised time is not promised to you neither is time promised to me 
You understand what I'm saying? So please, I plead and I, I beg us, before you commit your destiny into the hand of a man or a woman, before you, you say, I do to a man or woman, find you. When you find yourself, you're not going to go and marry a wrong person because you already know that there's a call on your life. You know the call on your life. You know the path you are walking. You're not going to go and marry an unbeliever because when you are saying, when you are saying that, uh, what's it called? You want to go and do night vigil, personal night vigil. You want to do some days of prayer and fasting. Of course, you will carry your husband along. That I'm going to take some days to fast and pray. So maybe there's no sexual intercourse during this period of time because I really want to see God's face. If that person is born again, genuinely saved, then they too, they have the mindset of being, you know, a purpose-driven living Christian. They will let you do what you want to do. Some of them might join you in your in your course for whatever you are searching for, looking to God for. And if they do not, but at least they will not be upset that, okay, my husband or my wife is taking time to seek God's face on this issue. But my dear, if you go and marry a wrong person because of pressure, if you want to, you go and marry um, somebody that is not aligning with the will of God for your life because your age, you're looking at your age or because you're looking at your, all your friends are married or everybody's in a relationship or your aunties and uncles are saying something. Everybody's going to say something. None of them is going to live in that marriage with you. None of them is going to live in that relationship with you. And trust me, when something happens and it's not, in the, in, it's not aligning with the will of God, even if um, you ask for, for mercy after, after you have married the person and things are not going well, God will have mercy on you. But again, why do you want to live with that regret in your heart? God will have mercy on you. God will show up for you in that, in that situation. God will be kind. But you cannot tell God how he will show you the mercy. You don't know how fast he will respond to you. Because it's not as if God is going to be condemning you. He's not going to condemn you. The Bible says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But again, you yourself you will now start feeling like regrets in your heart that I, I should have listened to God. I should have prayed more. I should have waited on the Lord more. I don't know why we are doing this tonight. I have um, one of my, my well, I won't say one of my friends because she's the only friend that I have anyway. Um, that person, Taiwo Noza, <clears throat> we went to high school together. She's in Nigeria, you know, and we haven't spoken for some time. We were speaking before, even after I got married, we we're still speaking. But <clears throat> after some time, we didn't speak for a long time. And, <clears throat> and one day, it was last year or two years ago, I was in the library and the Holy Spirit just told me to reach out to her. And I felt reluctant a little bit. I was like, I haven't spoken to her in a long time. And what the Holy Spirit was saying to me to ask her was out of ordinary. The Holy Spirit just told me, ask her, what is her relationship with the Holy Spirit like? So I felt like I haven't spoken to this person in a long time. And you want me to just ask her, what's her relationship with the Holy Spirit like? So I, I typed that message on her WhatsApp. I sent it to her. So when I sent it to her, <clears throat> she responded. She, she was like, mm, she responded. Mm. Then after I, I kept quiet, I wanted her to talk. If she doesn't talk, I wasn't going to say anything again. So then after a while, she now responded and said, thank you for asking because I'm just trying to walk my way back. So I asked her, is everything okay? She responded to me. She said, yes, Kenny, I'm on my way back to Nigeria. I just left. Um, she went on vacation outside Nigeria. So she was on her way back. So she said, I'll call you tomorrow once I land and everything. This lady called me the next day and you will not believe it. She told me that Kenny, the, she got married during the COVID time, she got married to this person and she was like, Kenny, um, none of our high school friends know this, only you know this. I said, okay, what's going on? She said that she has left the guy. The marriage didn't even last a year because she herself verbalized with her own mouth. I didn't say it for her. She said it. She said, Kenny, I'm regretting because I did not wait on the will of God for my life. She said, Kenny, I married this guy. This guy didn't marry me. She was like, Kenny, God did not bring this guy to me. I found him myself. I funded the wedding. I, I rented the house. I put every furniture inside the house. I did everything. And I asked her, I said, but why did you do this? She said, because everybody that we went to high school together were married. You were married. You already have two kids. And I, I didn't have nobody. I said, but our destinies are different. 
God is never late. So why didn't you wait on the Lord? The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow to it. Why not wait on the will of God for your life? It doesn't matter if people have been seeing you with this brother or this sister. It's not late to stay away and let God align you with his purpose. It doesn't matter how many years you have been with this person. If it's not the will of God and something in your heart, which is the Holy Spirit, because you're a child of God on this platform, the Holy Spirit is nudging you and telling you that that relationship is drowning you. You are going to Babylon. Please come back home. And it's never late to come back to Jesus. Jesus doesn't shut the door. Like the devil, the devil doesn't care. But Jesus is mercy and just forever, the Bible says. Marriage is deeper than what people think. Sex is, let me tell you, as fun as sex can be, when you get into marriage, there are days that even your partner will bring sex to you. You will be like, excuse me. Because there are some days sex is just not the answer. There are some days you just don't feel like that because there are more other things on the table. When you are not yet married, the devil portrays sex to you as the ultimate. When you are not yet married, the devil makes sex look like as if that is the only food you're going to be eating once you get married. That is going to be the only thing. You are smiling, Taiwo, but I'm saying the truth. <laughs> but when you get married, you will realize that there are so many things. It's like, it's like a book that you don't even know all the chapters. I'm telling you, everything. I went to marriage counseling at Redeem before I married my husband. I did marriage counseling at CBFIM. Before I married my husband, even while I was in Nigeria, I read a lot of Christian books on marriages. So already I, I knew that, okay, I wanted to marry a believer, this and that. I, I was reading books. Even I even read, Christ, there were Christian books that were on sex, that were written on sex. I read those books. Some of those books were even sometimes you ask yourself, you say, is this a believer that wrote this book? Because the pictures that were in those books, you'll be like, oh my God. But I was trying to prepare myself for marriage. But at the end of the day, getting into marriage, you realize that, oh, Benny, there's just many more things that nobody can prepare you for. Nobody can prepare you for, for, for different challenges that will show up in marriage. Please. Nobody can prepare you. David, please leave me alone. You want to kiss? Can you see? This is part of marriage, I'm telling you now. You understand? So nobody can prepare you for certain things. You cannot say that this is how the man that you married that swept you off your feet, like people say. You don't know how the person will behave after you're in marriage. Even you, when certain situations happen, you don't even know how you will behave to that man or how you handle that situation. But please, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that tonight, 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 please, search your hearts search your hearts please i beg you god loves you god loves me god loves every one of us on this platform he wants us to walk in his will when you walk in your will you will not waste your life and you will not waste your time if you are going god's instruction does not always come in long sentences sometimes sometimes the instruction will be just two words or one word or three words once you listen to that instruction and you are following it, when it's time for the next instruction, it will give you the next instruction. When you want to know your purpose, you have to create time to set yourself apart. I'm telling you, that's how I found my purpose. I, I created time to go away from Instagram. I created time because he specifically told me, it was like, get out from Instagram. And for that period of time, I left Instagram. Taiwo knew the time. I, I didn't post nothing. I didn't come there. I stayed away and I stayed in my house. All I did was pray and fast, night vigil, pray and fast, night vigil, read Bible, pray, fast, night vigil. I took care of my kids. I did other things I needed to do, but God was so kind enough. My husband allowed me, he gave me grace. Nobody stressed me out that time. You understand? And when the day that God was going to give me my visitation, God was so kind. My kids were not in the house. My kids were not in the house. And it was a blast. I'm telling you, do you think that the Holy Spirit is real? The Holy Spirit is real. Do you think that the Holy Spirit can dance with you? Yes, the Holy Spirit can dance with you. You, you may not see him face to face, but the whole reading, the whole atmosphere, the love is real. I'm telling you, 
the love is real. You just need to seek this God. You have to do it with all of, like your full chest, the way they say on Instagram, your full chest, run, chase him, chase him, chase him. And trust me, even after that encounter, you know, before that encounter, there have been diverse encounters. But like when you have a an encounter that is real life, not sleeping now, I'm not sleeping, real life encounter, when somebody touches you and presses you down, when the Bible says that the hand of God is heavy, is heavy on you, like you literally feel somebody like press you, like feels you, like I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> you understand? Like the, the, the whole experience, like somebody telling you, pick a book and a pen and start telling you, write this down. It's like somebody is standing by your ear. Somebody is talking to you by your ear and dictating. I don't know, like in Nigeria, when we're growing up, they dictate for us. They'll be dictating something. They'll tell you to write those things down. That is the way it was for me on the particular day. And I was on this prayer and fasting and everything, this consecration thing for a long time. But the day that that main um, assignment, the purpose was given to me, it was the day that I didn't expect. It was the day that it, it just took me on the next level. I didn't see it coming. And I was just writing, 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 writing. And as soon as it finished dictating to me, it just told me that's it for now. And then it pointed me to other things to do throughout the night. You know, well, then we start the singing and the dancing and the singing and the dancing. But what am I trying to say to you is that for everything that I want to do, for example, I go back, like the day Taiwo told me, oh, you're going to minister a guardian of eagles. I said, okay. But when I went back to my maker, the one that made me, I asked him, what would you want me to talk about? And I start preparing myself. When I was preparing myself, there are ways you want to prepare, excuse me guys, please. There are ways you want to prepare yourself. If it's not going to align with that assignment given to you, it will help you. Bible says in Romans 8 chapter, Chapter, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says he helped our infirmity. That means you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to pray. You don't know how to sing. You don't know how to teach. You don't know how to do nothing. There's nothing you can do, but he helped your infirmity. He helped you. So you have to always come and say, oh, this will help me in this area. I need help in this area. I need help to do this. And so when he pointed me to the Bible scriptures, he wanted me to align with, you know I mean? You know how God speaks to you. You speak to me in my own different ways. You speak to you in your own different ways. But all these things, you know those patterns out of your relationship with God, out of coming into his presence and knowing your will, his purpose. So what I did was when he told me and I started preparing or he was preparing me for that guardian of the eagles, anytime I pray, I go back to my purpose and I say, God, my purpose, you established it in this chapter, this book of the Bible, this chapter, this verse. Let that purpose come alive in this ministration because you can't wait until when you now have a big platform to work in your purpose. No. Once the, your purpose has been established and you are, you are aware of it, now you don't have excuse. Every day of your life, every decision that you are making, you are working towards that purpose. You are working towards the will of God for your life. That is now your destiny. You understand what I'm saying? Now that you know your destiny, that okay, this is what God has written concerning me. This is the Bible scripture that he has established for me concerning my, my life. God, this is what you have said for me. As I minister on guardian of the eagles today, let so so and so that you have said about me. Let it be so. Let this come to pass. Let this be so. So now every day I'm literally asking God, help me to walk in your will. Doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect because there are some days the Holy Spirit wants, okay, for example, now, yesterday night now, when I got up in the midnight and the Holy Spirit wanted me to pray because there are many, oh, many nights. I hardly sleep. I, I hardly sleep in the midnight. You can ask Taiwo. I'm literally either praying or reading Bible or, you know, and it's not like I'm praying for myself. I'm not praying for myself. But the thing is that yesterday when I got up, and I knew that there was a someone for me to pray. I knew that I needed to pray, but my heart was grieved. My emotions were grieved last night and I just couldn't do it. I'm human. The, the, the Holy Spirit threw me away because I didn't do the prayer. He didn't throw me away, but I still went back to him and said, forgive me. I, I mean, 
the prayer that he wanted me to pray, even though I don't know it, because sometimes I don't even know what he wants me to pray. But once, he, once I get that sense of urgency, I go in his presence. And as I go in his presence, obedience is always the first key. As I go in his presence, then he starts to unfold what he wants you to pray about or the situations that he wants you to undo. Or, or pray or you know to handle so i didn't do it last night i'm trying to tell you i'm human just like you because that last night my emotions you know bible says that you should guide your heart everything you want to do it starts from the place of your heart so i knew that even if i'm praying i can only sin to the holy spirit even if i'm praying because my flesh was in in um how do you say in control at that time and that is what the devil wants to do you always want to like give us a blow in the heart so that that way your heart, you cannot align it. You understand with what God wants you to do. But I pray that tonight that the Lord will help us. The Holy Spirit will help all of us to align with his will, you know, to align so for us to take that time. It's not going to be easy to fast because I'm telling you when the Holy Spirit during that period, he was the one that summoned me into that consecration. And when, Whenever I go into that fasting like that, sometimes I break nine in the night, eight in the night. You know, sometimes it's not two o'clock breaking. It's not three o'clock. So it's not easy. And it was for days. I mean, this has been since May and we are in July now. So it's not, um, it's going to be easy. You understand? There are some days I tell I will say some days, ah, my body cannot carry this fast. So I'm going to eat today. I'm not going to fast. You understand? You know, but one thing that God told me is that he said, Every time that you are fasting and you are praying for others, when I tell you to pray for others, you're not praying for yourself. I'll be resolving your own issues. And are those things happening? Yes, it resolves my own issues without me even talking about my own issues because I'm obeying what is telling me to do. When it's telling me, hey, pray for this person. And the funny thing is that these people that I'm praying for don't even know that I pray for them. I don't talk to, you, to them about it. I don't even mention it was my own. I'm only just being obedient to the one that is sending me. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm just doing my own part, but I see how it resolves my own issue without me even asking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Kenny. Um, I think now some of you will bear witness with me that the Holy Spirit has a reason why tonight is more interactive. So the topic tonight, like I put in the chart, is the pursuit of purpose. The pursuit of purpose. But I just, I put, um, I throw in the question at the beginning, which is um, the difference between destiny and purpose. And our sister, which happens to be my twin, defined at the beginning, bro, you know, to define that purpose is the original intention was why things or why a person was being created. And Sister Kenny, who just spoke now, said, in summary, you can fulfill destiny until you find your purpose. You know, so I threw the question on the floor that I want us to make it more interactive tonight before I step in. So that we can learn, you know, I, I'm a kind of person who believe in um, learning from others. I'm telling you, you'll be so shocked what people have on the inside. You'll be so shocked what God has placed on the inside of the people or what people can think, you know. So if any other person have any other definition, of what you think before we begin to open the scriptures about the difference between purpose and destiny. Any other person? Any other person? All right. Okay. All right. So they've defined for us what purpose is. Um, and like I said, we open from the book of Jeremiah 1 5, which says, The fire formed thee, and the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, 
I sanctify thee and ordained. Destiny is preordained. The same thing with purpose, you know. And ordained the prophet unto nations. Let's quickly look at the book of Jeremiah 29 11. If you are there, you can go ahead. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah. 29. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, well. Go ahead, go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Thank you very much. Therefore, I know who knows God. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See it, the Lord. Thought of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. For there is a condition attached to that statement. But before we visit that condition, one question I want us to start with again now is, have I found my purpose? Have I found my purpose? You know, um, Sister Kenny already mentioned a couple of things that I'm supposed to talk about tonight in my notes, uh, which is part of the topic the pursuit of purpose. What does it take to pursue your purpose? And that was why I threw in that definition, that question, which is the difference between purpose and destiny. You can pursue or go on a journey you have not defined. How do you begin to run a race and you have not really defined how many miles you are going? What is the definition of that, that race? What is the goal? What is the purpose? What are you running for? You're running for fun? You're running to win good medal? What is the goal? What is the purpose? So I want us to meditate on this topic because you see, I've said this over and over. If I really want to live American dream, Believe me, I think I would have taken some negative decision. They will look nice. Those decisions will be negative because to me, I have a relationship with God and I know better. But to other people seeing me, they will see me as being hardworking. They will never see it as negative. They will see me as this guy is very hardworking. This guy is doing very well. Meaning I'll be working, doing everything to be successful, to prove to the world. Because what American dream is, is you have to live large to prove yourself to the world that you are successful. So people will go extra mile. They will do anything at the extent of anything to get that done. And you see, when you begin to live like that, and that's why, you see, all of these things cut across many things. They cut across many things, you know. But the question is, it all starts from, the only reason why a lot of people, or let me say, some of the reason why a lot of people um, neglect this purpose is because many, never created time to go to the manufacturer. Many, and some who created the time, were not patient enough. If you remember when Sister Kenny began to talk, she said, none of us know how long it's gonna take God to respond. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, you know. And you see, sometimes from what we have seen, 
a lot of times, God, because he's a sovereign God, he, he might decide never to even reveal the destiny, meaning the destination. It will only be revealing the purpose bit by bit. A good example is the life of David. If you check through the Bible, we, were, we never saw anywhere in the Bible where there was a prophecy from King David or from Samuel before God spoke to him. I'm talking about before God spoke to Samuel. There was no prophecy that David, like his name was mentioned, that he was supposed to be a king. But when Saul, King Saul messed up, David was found. What I'm trying to say is, I want everyone, including myself, you know, one thing about me is every time I prepare for a message, I prepare for the message as if God is talking to me personal. I don't prepare for a message to go minister. Please, if you're a minister of God here, or maybe you have been privileged or you minister or you run anything you minister, please never do that. Never. There are many times, even before I come to minister, my heart is already broken in the presence of God. Even before, either here or in church, my, you can ask my wife. My wife is right here. Many times before I get to church on Sunday, I've already cried. My, <clears throat> excuse me. My kids will be watching me in the car, driving to church, crying or dressed up. My wife is sitting by my side. My mom is watching me from the back crying. Why? That is who I am. Because you see, every time you do that, every time you go to his presence, like God, I'm not going to minister. I need you to minister to me, me, me first. That is how transformation emerge. Transformation emerge. Then you will begin to see yourself in what even you yourself, you are dishing out to the people. So I'm asking the question once again, because I don't want to rush and begin to dive quick or because of time. Because one of the reasons why God has brought us together on this platform is to help each other so that we can, because you see, if you are running daily, they, you know what? Let me quickly open a Bible verse to establish what I'm saying so that um, let's look at 1 Corinthians 9.26. Can someone quickly read that for us, please? 1 Corinthians 9.26. 1 Corinthians 9.26. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beated the air. Thank you so much, Sister Wura. This is Apostle Paul talking. He says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty or uncertainly, like a person who doesn't have a hand. I check different translations. Some translation says, I, I therefore so run. Let me quickly read those translation for you. So you can see it. NIV says, therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. Many of them use the word uncertainty, uncertainly, aimlessly. I want to find one that's, that used the word purpose. It's a translation called Easy English Bible. I use about close to nine translations for my studies. Easy English Bible. It says, because of that, I do not run with no purpose. I do not fight like someone who only hits the hair. Brethren, I don't know the journey you have embarked in this year, 2023. Have you consulted the Lord? 
That was why I used the scenario that I was telling you that if I wanted to live American dream and make money and dress large, dress luxurious, drive exotic cars, there's nothing wrong in those things as long as you are living in purpose. But it becomes wrong when you are chasing, you see, when the Bible says, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That is exactly what it is. People have exchanged purpose, which is their soul. They exchange purpose, their soul, for fame, for a good life, for a fast life. So the question, some people right now, they're in relationship, which the, if you listen to everything my twin just said now, she just narrated a story about our friend, our closest friend, who went to a marriage, married, and believe when she began to narrate you, because I know this lady very well, when she began to tell me everything the lady went through, I was shocked. I was shocked. To the point that the lady would be at work and coming home would become depression. <laughs> Brethren, please, I'm be and that's what I always tell people. I don't know how people who doesn't have good relationship with God, I don't know how their marriage succeed. And the only way it's going to look like the marriage is successful. You know why? Because that marriage will be full of fun. There will be no impact. <laughs> oh my God. Let me repeat that again. There will be so much fun. Fun of, they will be traveling. They will be dressing good. Everything will look so fun. But when it comes to impact, a life of purpose, that place will be dead. Because no man, no man can fulfill purpose without sacrifice. No man. I've never seen one. Even when it comes to professional world, when it comes to academic world, no man fulfill purpose in any face, any face of life without sacrifice. Because there are rules of engagement. No man. So I'm asking this question again. What are the decisions? What are the journey you have embarked on? I want us to quickly look at the life of a man. Let's start with Adam and Eve. Please, let's open to the book of Genesis 3, verse 8. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Genesis 3, verse 8. You are there, you can go ahead. Genesis 3, 8. All right. I read. Genesis 3, 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the tree of the garden. In pursuit, the, the topic says, the pursuit of purpose. No man, you see, the pursuit of purpose starts first with one thing first, is the pursuit of God. If any man we, we finish well, we finish very well, that man must be willing to start. He starts first from the presence of God. In, because from here, verse 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. God came, meaning that, God comes regularly at that hour in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from where? From the presence of the Lord. You see, the question is, you see, while I was meditating and preparing for this, meaning they were still in the presence of God, but they have left the right location. 
there was a specific location where they meet. It's like you coming to church and that person is a sinner. Everybody is in the presence of God. And the pastor is making an altar call. Say, who is here? Who wants to surrender their life to Christ? And the person refused to respond. You understand what I'm saying? That is exactly what that person is doing. When a person begins to hide from the presence of God, it will be very hard for such a person to find what it takes to pursue their purpose. Very hard. It will be very difficult for that person to find what it takes or what is needed to pursue their purpose. Let me show you something. For you to know that they were, in, because the Bible established it here in verse 8. They were hidden. We were hidden from it. They were still in the presence, but not in the right location. Brethren, it's very important to know that, you see, God is everywhere, but God speaks in the right places, right atmosphere, right places. Don't forget that. You will hear people say, I can worship God from anywhere. God is everywhere. <laughs> God doesn't speak from everywhere. Let me repeat that again. God is everywhere, but he doesn't speak from everywhere. <laughs> Verse 9. Verse 9 says, And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? I am at the place where we meet. At the cool of the day. Everywhere is my presence, but this location where we fellowship, I can't find you there. I can't find you there. Adam, where are you? If, where are you? You see, the reason why I'm taking my time, brethren, is there are many people who have been disjointed. They have been disconnected. This question God is asking, God is calling the same people, just like our topic at the last garden of the Hebrews. Where are thou? Because you see, every oh my God, do I really want to say this? All right. When I gave my life to Christ, 2008, I began to pursue God intensively, intensively, very intensively. From December 28, 2008, to the point that I don't really watch TV that much. So all I do, all I did back then was pray, pray, study, pray, study, pray. And the very week, three months after my salvation, the very week of our birthday, me and my twin, that very day, I'm a kind of person, the day of my birthday, I always consecrate, I separate that day to be in God's presence. So I don't always, till now, till now, I don't have that sense of, you know how people post on social media two weeks, oh, two weeks to my birthday, they are counting down. <laughs> Brethren, <laughs> I remember when I was in a relationship with my wife, I used to tell her, babe, please stop this thing. Stop it. <laughs> there's, there's nothing like counting down. You see, rather than putting those things on social media and say you are counting, oh, five days to my birthday, you should go and you should go in the secret place and go and ask God, God, am I still on track? Or am I off schedule? You see, those things, I don't want to sugarcoat things for you. I want to be very honest and be very sincere with you. Many people are completely, completely outside God's plan when it comes to life and destiny. And I knew that back then. 
because I have wasted about almost 10 years, the life of addiction, drug, fornication, masturbation, many things, drinking, alcoholism, pornography. So now me giving my life to Christ, you now expected me to come on social media and be celebrating oh, five days to my birthday, two days to my, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Everyone, see, I will tell you what, what they told me that day. So that very day, till now, I, I always, you see, that day is always a day of deep reasoning for me, deep reasoning. I will be asking many questions. I will be begging God, show me, please speak to me. If I've missed it, if there's something I ought to have done last year at the previous age that I've not done, God, please show me mercy. Please show me mercy. Please show it, oh God. Because of the revelation they showed me in 2009. I was in the presence of God, March 13, 2009. I didn't close my eyes. I, I was hearing it like this. And the Holy Spirit told me, said, my son, he said, once it's 12, bam. Let's say today now, today is 18. Let's say tomorrow is my birthday, 19. The moment it is 12 a.m. that we entered into the 19, Holy Spirit said they will open the book. Can everyone hear me? They will open the book of that person. The Lord, the God will tell the angel, open the book. Then they will look into the book. I'm telling this thing I'm telling you, I've never shared it publicly before. I was not, my eyes were not closed. I wasn't dreaming. They were telling me direct. They said they will open the book and they will check. Is this person walking in destiny? And if the angel tell God that this person is not walking in destiny, they said they will check the posture of the person's act. Is the person willing or trying? Maybe the person has been trying to know what is plan? What God's plan is for his or her life? He said, if that person has been trying to know, he said that very day, if that person prepared themselves, create time for God, he said they will release grace for that person to press in and some things will be revealed to that person. He said, if that person has not been trying, everyone will begin to look for a way Oh my God. Brethren, please, I'm encouraging someone here. See, I'm not, I celebrate birthday. Please don't, I don't want anyone to take something out of context from what I'm saying. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not against birthday. I celebrate birthday. This past Sunday, my wife and I just celebrated seven years of wedding anniversary. So I, I'm not against celebration. What I'm trying to tell you is, before you celebrate your birthday, make sure that you first go back to the manufacturer, God. Because you see, let me tell you the truth. What is the point of a public celebration? Maybe you went out to eat with friends or family, or you did, it, or you did something elaborate, something very big. You bought, you, you, you rented a hall, you, you paid so much money, and yet everyone is crying. And yet everyone is weeping that this person, this person have not started even the assignment. This person have not even found the assignment. Some founded the assignment, they abandoned it. Have you forgotten the story of Saul? Have you forgotten the story of Judas? Some, have you forgotten the story of some people you know who were believers before? Believers, strong believer. Right now, they are in the club. What do you think happened to those people? What, how do you think God feels every time God looks from heaven and every, every year they celebrate their birthday in the club? How do you think God feels? Brethren, like I said, I'm not against celebration, but make sure before you celebrate, before you celebrate, God, go into the presence of God. Create time. God, what is your plan? Like this year, Two, three weeks or a month before our birthday, I'll begin to pray. Lord, what, what, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm already talking to God about next year. Lord, show me. Show me what is to come. Go and read through Old Testament. You know what? 
let me show you where you can see it clearly now. Let's quickly read the book of Genesis 12. Genesis chapter 12. I want a fast reader. Genesis 12, 1 to 7. Genesis 12. Before we begin to pray very soon. Genesis 12, 1 to 7. Anyone? Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was 70, sorry, and Abram was 70, um, sorry, I'm so sorry, 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten from Haran. And they went forth to the to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land of the place of Sechem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanites was then in the land. Verse seven. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Thank you so much. Brethren, like I said, it all starts, the pursuit of purpose. It starts with one thing first. It starts from the presence of God. Because that was where you were created. Adam and Eve were created in his presence. Remember what Bible said in the book of Genesis 126? And God said, let us, let us make man. He was created in the presence. So there is no way that man can find purpose without going back to the presence. He starts with seeking force a presence. Please, I encourage you. Please go back. Go back. Like my, my twin said. You cannot, you cannot define true life until you find God. And you cannot find God until you go back to his presence. And this presence, you can even establish it anywhere, in your bathroom, in your car, in your bedroom. You don't have to get to church. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to church. But what I'm trying to tell you is start from where you are. I'm telling you. Start me if I go to a cookout and I know that maybe the person who's doing a cookout is a Muslim, or maybe a lot of people who are non Christian that are going to be there. I always have my earpods in my pocket. I'm telling you, I can be in the airport, I can be at the airport where there's so much noise and yet still establish God's presence. Everything starts from your heart. If you look from here, God wanted, or yes, wanted to start a journey of purpose with Abraham. I want you to see from the beginning, to see what it takes to pursue the pursuit of purpose. There's a lot of sacrifice. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging, there's a lot of, you see, one of the things I said last weekend, while I was ministering over the weekend, a lot of people can make heaven. As long as they live a holy life to please God. But let me tell you the truth. You might not accept this, but I'm telling you the truth. Some will make heaven because they didn't fulfill purpose heaven will still be disappointed in them. And yet they will make heaven. 
You remember the poor Lazarus? There was the rich man and the, and the Lazarus, the poor, the, the beggar man that has souls. Jesus gave that parable. He says, when they get to heaven, he was caught in at Abraham's bosom. Did, did Lazarus fulfill destiny? No. No. He, believe me, look at the man, the man, the poor, um, the two thieves that were killed by Jesus Christ. Did you, <laughs> did you listen to how Jesus Christ responded to the servant of John the Baptist when they came to tell him that John the Baptist has been apprehended? John the, let me be honest with you. John the Baptist was not supposed to die like that. He wasn't supposed to die like that. Brethren, what I'm trying to tell you is, it's very, you see, if the Bible says comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. One of the things that destroy us in, in the kingdom, in Christianity, is we look at another person who looks, who looks successful as our yardstick. Then we refuse to, to you know, to continue to pursue the presence of God. Look at what God did to this man, Abraham. I want us to learn a big lesson from his life. He says, now the Lord, this was the, the first two sentences. Now, the first three sentences. Now the Lord. The first three words. Now the Lord. The Lord, not man. This man was Abraham was in his family doing his own thing. Now the Lord about to start a journey. He said, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred too. He told him to leave his country, leave his kindred, which is his people of his tribe. And from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. <laughs> Brethren, you want to find purpose? You must be willing to sacrifice everything to pursue it. You must be willing. The first thing, it starts from the presence. The presence. Second, you must be willing. What are you willing to sacrifice? Have you? <laughs> I used to watch years ago. I used to watch UFC a lot. I love boxing and UFC. Soccer, you know, tennis. And there was a day I came across one of, one of, um, one of the professional boxers who is married. You know what the guy said? The guy said, when he has a fight, maybe like three months ahead or six months ahead, he said, for him to be fit, he has to stay away for sex sometimes for two months. Do your research if I'm lying. For anyone who, is, who, who does, some of you guys were born here. Some of you guys did track. Or track. How many of you guys can remember how many runs you did in high school? Let to talk of people in professional sports. Professional. At least I know Sister Oi back then when she was in high school, when they used to do <clears throat> the marathon. I have a brother of mine here, you know, but I Kunle, Ola Kunle, who does track too. Nobody, see, nothing, nothing. Nothing of reward. Nothing of reward that doesn't come with a price. I will repeat that again. Nothing of reward that doesn't come with one price. Imagine God telling this man, he said, leave your father's house. Leave your kindred. Leave. 
God is taking him from everything that he loves the most. The things that are most precious to him. You see, for you and I to find ourselves, you must disconnect from the most precious things first. God wants to take him on a journey of purpose to find himself. Because, you see, the journey of purpose starts from who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who, who, who is Taiwo? Who am I? And look at what God said. After God told him that, God now told him, he said, if you will leave your father's house, if you will do these three things, he said the first thing, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land, there's a place I am taking you. There is a place I am taking you. He said, but and I will show thee, if you can follow, if you can obey, if you can sacrifice, I will show you. If you are willing to sacrifice, to focus, to stay in my presence, I will show you. And for you to know that God was true to his word, I want you to follow me. God now made a promise to him in verse 2. He said, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. The first thing he told him is when you obey, I will show. The second thing, then I will make you. In pursuit of purpose, the moment we begin to seek to obey, the making is in the, it's activated. Because one of the precious goals of purpose is the making, who you are becoming. The making, the making. Because it is who we are made that eventually lead to the destiny. The making, I will make thee. Remember what Jesus Christ told the disciples? He said, follow me and I will make thee fishers of men. Follow me. If you, you see, follow means observe to do. That was the definition Holy Spirit gave me last year. To follow. Follow means you observe that person and do. You observe to do. If they take one step, you take one step. They take two steps, you take two steps. Follow me. When the person stays, you stay. Follow me and I will make thee. And look at the things God began to do. I will bless thee. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, verse 2. I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that call. Okay, now I'm going to jump to verse 7. I want you to see something in verse 7. Verse 7 says, um, let me move to verse 6. Verse 6 says, And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moray. And the Canaanite was then in the land. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham. You know why the Lord appeared? Because he kept moving. Because he kept seeking. Because he kept obeying. Brethren, one of the reasons why many people are tired, frustrated, is because they have stopped obeying. They have stopped obeying. They have stopped seeking. They have stopped coming to the presence. How do you, how do you run a life, a life that you didn't create yourself? How do you run a purpose without going to the one who created or manufactured you? How do you run such a life? Because purpose can only be gotten accurately from the manufacturer. And verse 7 says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto thy seed, I will give this land. 
Let me ask you a question. How come God never told him that in verse one? What I'm trying to tell you is our purpose in life is in faces. Our purpose is at different faces. Is to become like my twin said, to be, is to get to that destiny, that destination. But the purpose, the purpose is part time. Remember the story I said last week. If you look at the story of David, David was, he was first seen from his father's house. He started as a shepherd boy. But to those who saw him from the palace of King Saul, because when God afflicted King Saul and King Saul, he discerned by discernment that this affliction can be cured through music. He said, can you, can you help me find a skillful musician? And one of the servants said, there is a son of Jesse. I'm trying to paraphrase now. He said, there is a son of Jesse who is skillful in playing instrument. Those one, we're not even sure, even if the parents knew that David has such skills. But the servant of King Saul, they knew him as a skillful person who can play instrument. Yet, none of them had no idea that there was a king in him. Brethren, what I'm trying to tell you is, the more we walk in obedience, the more we stay. You see, the pursuit of purpose, like I said, first, it starts from the presence because that was where we were created. We were created from the presence. And that is why, for anyone who goes to church or you go to an atmosphere, an atmosphere of prayer, or most especially, atmosphere of worship, you will realize that when the presence comes down intensively, that is where you find your true satisfaction. When that presence comes, that is, that, is, that is one place where your, your, you see, your vulnerability, you can see a person who is so odd. Oh, man. I'm a good example of that. I know some people here too that that thing has happened to. I've seen people who are very quiet, very, very quiet, very easy, easy going person. But when the presence of God comes down, you will see them flying, especially ladies. You will see them flying. Why? Because that was where they were created. You will see people break into, people will break down. Because you see, when they go back to where they were created, where they were formed, that is where the remodeling begins to happen. Everything begins to happen there. Everything. That is the place where you are very vulnerable. That is where your true identity comes out. You can see a person extremely very quiet, but when the presence of God come upon them, you will see them. the same thing happened to King Saul. When they go to Ramah, the Bible said King Saul began to prophesy. And they said, is Saul also one of the prophets? Because, you see, when that presence comes, what is inside you, that purpose will be discovered. The question I'm bringing to you tonight is, are you willing to stay in that presence? Are you willing to stay? Look at what God did to Abraham. Until he moved, when we go to verse 7, then the Bible says, and God appeared unto Abraham and said, unto this land. He didn't give him the land where he was. He gave him the land where he has moved into. When you obey the first assignment, which is part of the purpose of your life, then it will unfold the next phase of the assignment. The pursuit of purpose, like I said, start from his presence. Two, the seeking of God. 
You must seek the one who manufactured you to discover what he has written concerning you. Let's quickly look at the book of, going back to Jeremiah 29 again. Jeremiah 29, now from verse 12 to 13. Anyone? 29 from verse 12 to 13. Then ye shall call, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Thank you. Can you see that? If you read from verse 11, God made a proposal to man. And verse 12. He unfolded the code. You see, <laughs> please, I beg you, brethren, as you go on this journey with God, one prayer that our general here, my pastor, used to emphasize a lot for me and for some of us who knows is Ephesians 1.17 that, Lord, let my eyes of understanding be open. The reason why I'm telling you that is because there are many things you have read in the Bible, but until the eyes of understanding is open, you will never know that you are reading secret. You will only think you are reading the Bible, but that you are reading secret that will change your... When I mean secret, I mean real, real, real secret, like an FBI secret, real secret. <laughs> for you to know this thing is a secret let's start from verse 11 for I know this was God speaking to Jeremiah this was God <laughs> oh my God and guess what this same chapter was what God God was you see, you see this secret oh my God thank you Holy Spirit do you know that this, what our sister just read now, was the secret Daniel used in Daniel chapter 8? <laughs> Can anybody be, I, don't, I want to know if I'm, maybe I have some Bible students here tonight. This chapter you're seeing, this chapter was when God was telling Jeremiah that the children of Israel will go into exile for 70 years. God was telling Jeremiah that Jeremiah, let me look for the verse. Okay, verse 10. Please follow me, verse 10. I read. Verse 10 says, For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years, be accomplished at Babylon. I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. God was, was giving this prophecy to Jeremiah to tell the children of Israelites because of their disobedience, they will go, they will be taken as a slave to Babylon. And it says, after 70 years. And you see, the, the reason, <laughs> oh my God, Holy Spirit, please help me. My body is very heavy right now. Holy Spirit, please help. I want someone to catch what I'm saying. Because what our sister just read now, ay, 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 that was exact, those two verses she just read now, read now, was summarized in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. <laughs> this you see what what she just read now was the secret Daniel used to find God. What she just read now was the secret Daniel applied. That was the prescription that Daniel applied. Let me read verse eleven. He said, "For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, 
Now, God just told them, verse 10, they'll be going into slavery for 70 years. But he ended that statement. He said, but after 70 years, I will visit. Ah, Oluwa, help me. He said, the reason why my body is heavy right now, he said, I will visit. Yet, Daniel had to fast for 21 days for him to visit. Hmm, Jesus. What, I'm t- what they are showing me, as I'm, I'm, I'm seeing something now that I never saw before. So even God can promise you that he will visit you. But if you don't provoke that visitation with prayer, that visitation will hang. It will, it will hang. It will be suspended. Go and read the book of Daniel. From cha- Daniel started praying from chapter 8. <clears throat> Verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Verse 10, he gave them prophecy what will happen in the future with a promise that he will visit. Now, he now review verse 11 that I might have said you guys will go into slavery, but I didn't mean it. That was not my intention. That wasn't my intention. This verse 11 is a summary of God's heart. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. But look at the condition, verse, verse 12. Verse 12 says, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, verse 13, and ye shall seek. Do you know what it means to seek? And ye shall seek me, and find me, when you search, when you shall search for me with all your heart. Wow. Can you say, please, I beg you, when you have time, find time, create time, because you have time. Let me correct that, that sentence. Not when you have time, create time. I want you to go and meditate on this verse 11, from verse 10 to 13. Verse 11 again, verse 12 says, then ye shall, you see, if you check those conditions, everything was in the hand of man. He also, he also revealed the things he would do. He says, verse 12, then ye shall call upon me, meaning you will make a choice. You will make a decision. You will have to create that time. You will have to make that call yourself. He says, and ye shall go. Remember what I said before. People will say, God is everywhere. God is, no, no, no. God is everywhere, but God doesn't speak everywhere. He said, ye shall go. There's a place you have to go. That was the place God came in, in the book of Genesis 3. When he came there, he couldn't find Adam. He came there, couldn't find them. Brethren, God has come to that place in your room. He has come to you many times. He's looking for you. Where are thou? Where are thou? Every time they open the book, ah, oh my God. I shared a story where one of my mentors shared years ago. This man had a dream. In that dream, he was climbing a ladder and he was on ladder 11. And they showed him, they said, do you know that you are supposed, you were supposed to be on ladder 26? Guess what? As at that time, according to the man of God who shared his story, he said the man was already in his 70s. Do you know how disappointed such a man will be? Brethren, please, (laughs) me, I won't lie to you. I won't lie to you. This journey, if you read Old Testament, you will know that this journey, this journey, this journey, ah, you need the help of God. You Believe me, I want to travel around the world, but in that travel, I want to fulfill purpose. 
I'm not, I'm not against a good life. No, no, no. I'm, I don't support poverty. I don't support complacency. I don't support living a small life. No, 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 I don't believe in that. I don't, I don't. What I'm trying to tell you is we must give attention, give attention to study. Paul told the same thing to Timothy. Give attention to study. Brethren, please, I beg you. If you that, I want you to go and meditate on this verse 12 and 13. He said, and ye shall go. There's a place you have to go for God to speak. Have you forgotten what he said in Habakkuk chapter 2? From verse 1, Habakkuk chapter 2, he said, and I will go and I will see what. Please, someone quickly read for me. Habakkuk chapter 2, from verse 1 and 2. Please, someone. I don't want to leave this Jeremiah 29. Can someone quickly read for me? The book of Habakkuk chapter 2, from verse 1 and 2. Let me use my phone. Go yeah, ahead. I'll read. All right. And the Lord answered me and said, Write a vision and make it plain upon tables that it may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the time it shall speak and not lie. Though we tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. That was Abacoc chapter 2, right? Yes, sir. Verse 2 to 3. No, no, from verse 1, 1 and 2. From oh, verse 1. Okay. All right. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse that's 2. It. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can you see that? <laughs> Brethren, <laughs> you see, like I said, when I read the Bible, I chew it. I can be on one verse for minutes, sometimes for hours. Something happened to me in June. I was on First Kings 19 for almost three weeks. For almost three weeks. Please, I beg you. You see, recently, Holy Spirit has been telling me something. He said the days of conventional Christianity is dead. Conventional, oh, just I go to church, go to Bible study, I do this. No, 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 no. If you are not growing, please go and find God. Go and find God. Go and find Oh my God, you know, our time is so limited. You see, look at that verse one again. Habakkuk chapter two, verse one. He said, and I will stand upon my watch. Uh -uh. My watch. That place is a, is a location. I will stand. Don't, have you watched those ancient movies? A watch tower is a place where you can see far. When, when the enemies are coming, you can see. I will stand upon my watch and I will set up, I will set me upon, meaning prepared, focused, ready to receive upon the tower. And we watch to see what he will say to me. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer. When I am reproved, brethren, now I want us to go back to Jeremiah 29 again. Verse 12 again. Verse 12 says, Then shall you call upon me. Jeremiah 29, verse 12 says, Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray. When you get there, make sure you pray. And that's what he said. He said, and I will act in. The first thing I will do, I will listen unto you. Look at verse 13. He says, and ye shall, you see, after you have prayed, while I am listening, now you will not move that prayer to the next level. That next level is what we call the next level of seeking. Now you will change your gear from, from calling to pray. You will go to the next level of seeking. Seeking means what well, so you see when you are searching for something, anything that wants to hold you, that is preventing you from seeing, you clear them, you clear, you move them. Seeking means desperate. <laughs> Brethren, I want to pray. I won't lie to you. My intention, my intention tonight was to minister till 10:30 and pray. 
have learned to be, to be very sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is doing tonight that I'm so sure of is establishing understanding. Understanding. So that you can grab, you can have a sense of deep. You see, the reason why many people have not gotten results as Christians, they have not learned the secret of seeking. Seeking, seeking. You say you will seek and search for with all ah. <laughs> That, that, that was why I said, this thing was the secret Daniel found. Daniel knew that he needed to seek. That was why he went on that 21 days. 21 days. Oh my God. Let me quickly show you something. Let's open to the book of Daniel chapter 8. I want to digress. I just want to establish something. So you understand that I'm not just trying to hype you guys. You know, Daniel chapter 8. Then we go to Daniel chapter 9. I read Daniel chapter 8 from verse 1. In the third year of the reign of King Be Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after which appeared, after which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was as chosen in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw a vision, and I was by the river of Ular. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river, a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward, the encounter of Daniel started from this chapter. They took him on a vision to heaven. Everything started in 2009. I read this old chapter of Daniel in one sitting. I was so hungry and desperate in one sitting from chapter one to chapter 12 because I couldn't just stop reading it. Let me quickly show you something in chapter nine. Chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. I read, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the numbers of what? Please, can someone, are we, can, can, if you are read, if you are following me, please, can you say hello, hello, anyone? I just want to make sure that I'm on the right path. He said, the numbers of years, whereof the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to who? Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in desolation of Jerusalem. He understood what was given. He even, he even referenced Jeremiah. That was where we read Jeremiah 29. From verse 10. And if you read that verse 10, God gave a promise. He said, I will visit you. But let me shock you. Because of what happened. You see, this Daniel was also smart. He knew what happened in Egypt. They were supposed to, God told Abraham. He said, He said, He said, He said, He said, my spirit, you know why my spirit is fired up? Holy Spirit is telling me. He said, please find knowledge. Find, see, if you miss what, because nobody knew what was told to Abraham. Nobody knew what God told Abraham. God told Abraham, he said, they will be in bondage for 430 years. Nobody to pray. Moses missing. Guess what? They were supposed to be there in Egypt for 400 years. They spent 430. 30 years extra. Because why? Nobody to intercede. Nobody to intercede. The Savior, Moses, missing. Holy Spirit told me now. He said, my son, pray. Tell them, pray. And you see why you pray? Acquire knowledge. 
Because Daniel acquired knowledge on time. On time. Guess what? He was supposed to be there for 70 years. Daniel started praying by the 68th year. Ah, wisdom. He acquired knowledge. Brethren, find wisdom. Find out. You see, that's why when I see Christians that joke with the word of God, you are joking with prophecy. You are joking with what the Lord is saying concerning your family. You are joking what the Lord will say concerning your generation. Ah, God help me. God help me. Help me, Lord. Please. Ah, it's already past 11. We're going to continue on Thursday. Please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you in the name of God. Please create time for God. Create time for God. No matter what you are going through, don't let what you are going through distract you. The reason why I'm begging you is because, let me ask you a question. When God gave that prophecy to Jeremiah, I, I sincerely apologize. In case you needed to go to work, anyone, please, I'm, I'm, I sincerely apologize. I'm going to round up before 11.05. I'm going to round up. When God gave that prophecy to Jeremiah, did we see the name of Daniel in Jeremiah 29? <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. What I'm trying to tell you is you are supposed to be a preserver. If you don't find the knowledge, if you don't stay in the presence of God, if you don't seek God, many generations will go down. It's not a cause. They will go down. Imagine what would have happened to the Israelites that were brought to Babylon if Daniel never prayed. I will leave it there. The same thing happens to all of us. You see, I said something over the weekend. The Bible has not stopped. The Bible has not stopped. The Bible still continues with you and I. You see, the same way people talk about um, Martin Luther King, the same way people will read, they will read your history. Martin Luther King, he paved a way. Today, people read about him. The same way there are many people in story, in history today, their life is full of failure, 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 because they refuse to rise when they were supposed to rise. Oh my God. 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 Brethren, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Don't be carried away with activity this year. Find, go and create time. Let us pray. Sister Fervin, please stay behind. I want to talk to you. Sister Fervin, please stay behind. Okay. Oh, God. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, as we go to bed tonight, Lord, I make a demand for divine encounter. I make a divine demand for divine encounters. Encounter us tonight, oh God, that we may find our purpose. Encounter us tonight, oh God. Lord, for those who are weak and willing, they are willing, but they are weak. Lord, strengthen them to press in, oh God. Strengthen their prayer life. Strengthen them, oh God. Strengthen them, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. And make a demand for a new strength. A new strength, oh God. New strength, oh God. New grace, O oh God, for those who struggle to study the word of God. The Bible says, both to will and to do is of him that works in us. The grace to study, the grace to stay in his presence. Lord, let that grace be released upon us tonight. Let that grace be released. Let that grace be released. Father, let your name alone be exalted. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Friends, I sincerely apologize for taking four minutes of your time. Please, I beg you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Please create time. Create time. You are not living for yourself. You were not created for yourself. I'm telling you, there are many forests inside you. You are a seed. In a seed, there are forests. In a seed, there's a tree. In a tree, there are many seeds. 
and there are many forests. There are forests. I I'm a seed. I came from a generation. That generation started from Adam. Please, please, I beg you, create time to find God. Find you. Find you. Find you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. You're welcome.